stocks are the first ones to report during earnings season. Obviously, there's, there's just a really sharp focus on what they have to say and their results. And oftentimes, you know, the way that they react to their earnings is not exactly the way that earnings season ends up going. That being said, you know, I thought there was a great interview with the CFO, Wells Fargo. They, they take full responsibility for the past few years' problems. That being said, that was a silver lining about their dividend yield. If the stock can stabilize, I think the valuation will look relatively attractive, um, and then that dividend should be a draw. But that being said, I just don't like the areas that they are exposed to this early in this financial crisis that we are in, or economic crisis and health crisis. Um, and therefore, I think that the, these banks should remain under pressure until we get some more clarity about when the economy comes out of what is certainly to be at least a one quarter recession. David Ellison, I mean, you have a small and large cap financial fund. How, what's mm -hmm. your strategy here for which banks you own and how comfortable do you feel about them heading into this after what we got from Wells and JPM today? Well, I, I own the big banks and I own the big uh, processors. I've had owned those for a long time now and I'm going to stay with those. I think they have the the capital and they have the, the earnings to uh, handle what's ahead, which we're not really sure what's ahead yet. So I, I you know, to today's action is, I think, really a, a function of the fact that there's still a fair amount of uncertainty. I, I think a tremendous amount of uncertainty in terms of how things are going to play out. The stocks are inexpensive, but they're going to stay inexpensive until there's more certainty. So between now and some date in the future, they're probably going to stay cheap and stay volatile. Um, I, I think two things are on my mind. Uh, one is the fact that back in 08, 09, when we had this, the last cycle that went, that went against the banks, uh, the 10 year was about three and a quarter. Today, it's about 80 basis points, 75 basis points. So we've lost you know, a lot of spread long term. Uh, the second thing is I think the, the banks this time around, primarily because of 08 and, and what's happened since then, you know, they're, they're, they're being asked by the federal government and by different states to be the providers of relief, meaning that, you know, mm -hmm. don't pay your mortgage, don't pay your rent, don't pay your credit card, uh, and, and that's going to put pressure on them. They're not asking people to not pay their Netflix bill. They're not asking people not to pay for their phone bill at, at, for Apple, they're asking people to not pay their mortgage. And so debt is the first line of relief, and that's what banks own. And, and so I, I think that's a concern to me because it's a pattern where nobody's pushing back. Every bank is saying, okay, then we'll mm -hmm. do that, that's fine. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, ever, we'll defer the payments for six months or however long it takes because they don't want to, you know, get up against uh, the politicians. So. That's going to be a problem for them going forward, and they've got to figure that out. Yeah, J Jamie Dimon sort of alluded to that on the call.